Hi, my name is Stuart Knimmons. I'm with the Stockholm Resilience Centre. I'm doing a postdoc research here. So today I want to talk about the, um, our understanding of the oceans and in particular looking at the fish that live on reefs, both coral reefs and also temperate reefs. For a long time when we've jumped into the water, we've counted up the number of species and you can see here I've got four different fish species. And we think that's good, it's better than having, say, two species or one species. But now with a lot of uh, marine systems under threat, we need to understand a little bit more. We know very much that the way the species are uh, going about their business affects things like their ecosystem uh, services to humans and also their resilience. So if a cyclone wants to come along, how, how would that affect them? So, when we have a look at the, at the um, fish, we see that uh, there is actually some which might have big mouths and teeth. Other fish might be quite long. While other fish might be, in fact, quite deep. And this gives, each of these different shapes gives them a different function. So that the fish themselves occupy different roles within the, within the reef. And this is called functional diversity, functional group diversity in particular, because we're looking at each of these as groups and sort of seeing what they do, how they eat, what they feed on, um, whether they're nocturnal, whether they're gregarious. And we're thinking to ourselves that it's better to have more functions in a system so they can respond to different pressures. However, we also note that, that uh, when we hop in the water, sometimes we see lots of the same fish. And it means that in some cases there's, there's an unevenness between the different types of species. In this case, there's three of this species and only one of each of these ones. And this is called species evenness. And a recent global study has found that this pattern is quite interesting around the world. So here's the world. And that's the tropics and the south in the north. And they found that when they were looking at species richness, that is the number of species, they found that it was as expected, that it was very high around the tropics and lower in the colder regions. And we expected that. We also found that we looked at functional group richness, that is the different functions that, are, that the fish take up, that it was higher in the tropics as well and lower in the colder latitudes. But the global study found a great surprise. They found that when they looked at species evenness, that it was not as you'd expect. It didn't follow species richness. Species evenness is actually higher in the colder waters and lower in the tropics. So this means that there is a more of a, 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 an, um, a relatively even spread of fish up in these colder areas than there is, say, on the coral reefs. The greatest surprise, though, came when the abundance of the fish, the function of the fish, and the types of fish were all put together into one measure, which is called functional diversity. And functional diversity found that there were hot spots around the globe. And these hotspots give us a new way to look at conservation because these hotspots are very special in their own right. They have abundant fish, they're functionally diverse, and they have a certain type of evenness, which means that they're very special. Not just the number of species, but in fact their resilience uh, to change and also um, their services to humanity.